so I have news. I have news. Um, not bad news. So um, we will have our quiz on Tuesday. So that's all good. I am actually going to do our capstone test on Monday, I think. Okay? This is okay. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. You guys are going to kill it. Um, I made up a review for the capstone, which um, I strongly feel in my heart. If you follow the directions on there, I think you're going to do really well. Um, so one of the capstone questions is like x plus 2, x plus 3, x plus 6, x plus 8. Which of these graphs match up to it? So what are you looking for? Where it crosses the x-axis, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like one of them works, and the rest of them don't cross the x-axis in the appropriate location. So as long as you can do that, you can do that. that that's no bounce or wiggle or cross. It's just crossing, right? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Yes. Is it only um, 10 questions or 10 questions? 10 questions total. <coughs> is it on everything you've done and just stick? Yes. It's, yes. Um, so I gave the review I made up um, to Mr. Dwyer, who's the math coordinator, and he is going to take it, uh, he's looking at it sometime today, and he will get it back to me sometime today and say, this looks great. Let's do it. I have to clean it up a little bit. I just it's just a rough draft of it. Um, and I think that if you were to spend a little bit of time, like 10 minutes, maybe 11, going through it, and then legitimately coming to me and saying, hey, can you help me with this problem? Hey, can you verify this one if you need to? I think you're going to nail this. I think... I think our average score in this class will be like an 8.8 .8 out of 10. Okay? Now, if you score a 7, you passed it. If you score an 8, a 9, or a 10, you get extra credit. We're putting it in the testing category. We're making it out of 14 points. That means I doubled the score that you get. So if you get an 8, you get two bonus points. You get a nine. You get six. Okay, that is in the testing category. So that is so. Some of you are coming. Hey, what kind of extra credit can I get? Boom! Nail this. Yes, sir. What if we don't get the test? Then I'm going to have you retake it. But I'm going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, Hey, come meet with me. And we're going to take a quick look. Oh, it looks like you missed number five. Okay, in your review, here's number five. Okay, you missed number. So, like, my one through ten on the review goes right along similar types of problems with one through ten. And then we'll just go over that. And then I'll have you retake it. And the same extra credit falls to you. But you would have to take retake it. Come see me and retake it. Do you Sorry, you guys are the future, so the better I educate y'all, the better all my retirement college, is. It's all about me. Yes? Some. Okay, yeah. It's on computer. Okay, now, there's only one thing about this test that I don't like. And this is the only thing I don't like, and, I, and we have argued it and argued it, and creep people are arguing it like crazy. And the people at the other schools are like, eh, and then you're like, dude, you know, you just. So, and there's more people that keep showing up. Oh, there's more Creek people that show up, math people that show up to these meetings than any other school. So we have a huge loud voice, which is great. You know, people who show up to this meeting are me. So you kind of know that I might be a little vocal. Um, and I'm the least vocal of our group. We have, Ms. We have Mr. Mimac, who's pretty vocal. We have Mr. Dwyer, who is very vocal. We have Mr. Matischek. I don't know if any of you have ever had him as a math teacher, but if y'all want to have the best math teacher in the world, you need to take a class with him. Huh? What about you? No, dude. I, he's, he is, like, I think I'm the rhinestone cowboy. He is, like, he's not the rhinestone cowboy. He is just the diamond cowboy. He... <laughs> He, he, he is an awesome teacher. I'll tell you what, I, I, and I absolutely adore him. I think he's a, absolutely an incredible person. So the four of us are always at the meetings, 
and we are very vocal. Things that, think comments that have come out of Mr. Dwyer at these capstone meetings. A lot of the schools are changing their curriculum to go right along with this. Our comments to those other schools are, we are not changing our curriculum for this capstone test because we already cover everything throughout the whole year for this capstone. We will not change a thing. And they're like, oh, you but you. And it's like, what, what we do here is the best I've ever seen for math for students than any of the schools I've ever been at in my life. Um, we work together collectively as teachers. We share with each other. Nobody claims they own this or own that. And that makes a pretty doggone powerful department, unlike I've ever seen. We're the only school that we write our own books for um, our math classes. And we'll have textbook companies who say, hey, you need to get our textbook because, no. Yeah, but no. Yeah, but no. OK, why is that? Because of the 30 plus math teachers in the school, if you were to take all the years that we've all taught, I would say we're about 280 years worth of experience. Roughly. I might be off a smidge. But that's you know Mr. Anderson? Yep. Like the gap in the matrix? Huh? Mr. Anderson. All right. I am looking at... I'm looking at the still the first page of, and then. Is it the back part of the first page? Yeah. You know, well, I'll look at just the front page for right now. Just took a quick glance. Is there anything left? We have one time for one question on the front page. If there's anything, Seven. which one? Seven. Seven. I didn't work it out yet. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for catching on. Yeah. Really. Uh, this is off the uh, Smurf Forest Blue Review Sheet. Uh, All right, so it says solve for X and then check our solution. Okay, um, I want to go ahead and solve. Can I drop this first set of parentheses? Yes. Yeah, there's nothing in front, so I can just drop them. Can I drop the second set of parentheses or something I have to do? Negative X plus two. Right, I have to distribute negative here and here. So the error that would take place here is not realizing that changes that sign. Okay, we good so far? Yeah. All right, let's see. I can add x over here. That's a 3x. That's a negative 13, so I'm going to add 13, and I'm going to get a 15 over here. Is, is that okay so far? So those of you who missed it, I combine these like terms, which is negative 13, then I added it over there. Divide each side by 5, and... If I were to plug that 5 back into my two equations above, I don't have any denominators with an x in it, correct? Yeah. I don't have any radicals with an x underneath it, do I? No. So our solution is going to work. Cool? Yeah. And that's key when I say that. Are there any radicals? So if I had, like, if this problem had a radical here or something like that, that's where you really need to check, okay? <laughs> Or if I had an X in the denominator. All right, I am on the back side of the front page. And I have time to do two. Time to look at two. Fourteen. fourteen. Number fourteen, we have three minus X minus four. Then we have less than five, X minus three, parentheses, X plus two. And then we do have a number line. And it says solve each inequality and expression interval notation and graph on the number line. Okay? Okay, so let's do our work down here. So I'm going to get 3 minus x plus 4. Agree? I just distributed here, here. And then that sign stays as is. 5x. Make sure I distribute negative 3 here and here. We good so far? Uh, like terms, uh, what is that, 2x uh, minus 6, did I do that, is my math correct? Okay, let's add 2x, to, or subtract 2x, I get it over here, and I'm going to subtract 7, bringing this over here, 
Is that right? And then I'm going to divide each side by negative 3. If I divide by negative 3, I get 13 over 3. What happens to this sign? It flips over. Why is it flipping over? I divided by a negative. I multiplied or divided, so I, I have to remember that. So 13 and a third is 4 and a third, roughly. So if I had a 0 here, and I had 13 and a third here, is it an open circle or a closed circle? Open. Do I shade to the right or to the left? To the right. If I want to write this as in interval notation, where is this pointing to? Positive what? Infinity. Okay, so my interval notation is going to be a rounded bracket. Why is it going to be rounded at 13 thirds? Not equal. They don't include it. And we go to positive infinity. Done. Time for one second question. What? Okay. 13? 15? Okay. Everyone clear here? So this is one that we combine two problems into one. It's an and. So if it's an and, it should be going this way. If the ands overlap each other, that's going to mean something, okay? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and solve each. Why did this sign flip? I divided by negative. And then let's take care of this one. Uh, I can multiply everything by 3 to clear the denominator. Is that okay so far? Yes. Just clearing the denominator, multiply all three terms by 3. 30. 15. Is that okay? So I have negative 2. Open or closed dot? Closed. Why is it closed? Because we have the equal. And then we have 0 somewhere in here. And then we have 15 down here. Open or closed dot at 15? Open. Okay. Am I going to go to the right or to the left at negative 2? I'm going to go to the right, so that's going that way. Am I going to go right or left with the 15? Left. Now, there's a reason I didn't draw the green all the way through. Remember, an and, we have to have everything stay true. Agreed? So, bless you. Bless you. Do we have an open dot anywhere? So, that open dot will not work for both of the equations. Agreed? That makes sense how I just said that. Okay? So this will continue to go this way as well. I guess I'm going to make that green. But there's a reason why I kind of left it. So I'm going to go from negative infinity all the way to negative 2. Actually, take that back. I take that back. I'm not I'm wrong. I'm wrong. So negative infinity all the way up to what? 15. Do I include 15? No. No, rounded bracket. Okay? And then I start back up at 15 and go where? So what does this say about 15 in our problem? Do we include 15 or not? No, we get all the way up to it. We get to like 14.9 forever, and then we start at 15.0 and put a 1 at, you know, all the way at the end of it someplace. Okay, so we're not including it. So that's the interval notation. Okay, put that away. And our homework last night was L. L. Cool. Seven. Seven. All right, we're in. We were doing the only episode you oh, just. We were doing odd, I swear. We did. Can you do all of them? I was confused. Yeah, I don't understand that. Okay. I'm happy to do number seven if you want. Yes? Sure. I can do seven and eight. All right. All right. Number seven from the homework. We have this. And I realize we only have to do the even, so but this won't hurt you to jot this down. OK, 
Okay, they tell us use the rational zero of one, negative one, two, negative two, our possible roots for the following polynomial. Use synthetic division to find at least one root, write the function in factored form, list the zeros of the function, okay? All right, so they are given this as our, as our values, okay? So those, any of those four, one of those should be a root. If I use synthetic division, what tells me if I have a root or not? If I have a zero for my remainder, okay? So um, there's no right or wrong how to start these. Some people say, hey, I'm just going to start with one, then I go to negative one, and then go to two, and go to negative two. But do you want me to start with two? Okay. Okay. So, so let me ask you this, and I'm, there's not a wrong answer. Why did you pick two? Okay. Because the last two negative. Okay, the last two negatives are negative. That could be an awesome way to look at it. The last two digits are a uh, even number as well. So two and negative two might be good ones to start with. If you started with one and negative one, they might not work, but it's not incorrect to start with them. Does that make sense? So you just have to pick one of them to start with. So if we pick two and we pick the pick the correct one first, uh, am I right? Can you tell me about two? So this would give me the point two negative eight, right? Yeah. It is, it is. Oh my gosh, thank you for correcting my error. I made an error. I made an error. That's nine. That should be an 18 right there, which that would give me a 14, which would then give me a 14 times 2 is 28, which then does indeed give me a zero right there. Ah, I'm so sorry. So, what do we know about 2 for sure? It works. It works. So, I'm going to look at 1, 9, 4 as a quadratic, yes? So why is it a quadratic and not a cubic? Because I go down, I divide it already, I found a root, so this is going to be 1x squared, or just x squared, plus 9x, plus 4. Can I find the other two zeros by factoring? There's not, not two numbers I can multiply to get 4, and two numbers of those numbers I can't find to get add to 9, right? So I've got to use quadratic, yeah. Why do you uh, do that equation instead of can you be the one that has like 1, 5, 1, 12? And what? When I'm doing number 7? Yeah, that is that. X is the plus 11x, whatever. And it's like some y You're on the wrong worksheet. Go to L. Oh. <laughs> All right. So everyone agree this can't factor? So go into the quadratic. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root. b squared is what? 81 minus 4 times A times C, all over 2 times A. Everyone agree? Let's do the arithmetic. Roger signs. So I have negative 9 plus or minus 81 minus 16. Mm. 7, 65. 65? Is that right? No. Yes? 81 minus 16? Mm -hmm. 65. Hey, does 65 have any uh, 65 have any perfect squares in it? No. So is that a rational or irrational, or is it a complex solution? Irrational. It's irrational. Okay? I don't have an I. Okay? So it does exist. So my zeros to this problem are I get uh, 2 is a 0. Negative 9 plus root 65 over 2 is another solution. And negative 9 minus root 65 is our third solution. Okay? You? Why do you do the quadratic if you're getting the zero? Because I wanted to find my other two zeros. I could have completed the square on it, but the quadratic's like a go-to for a lot of people. Uh, 
Okay. We good there? I got I got negative two from the group. I think. I don't know if I did it wrong in the place. Let's just double check. So you're saying negative two, okay? So that would be that, and that would give me a five there. That would give me a uh, negative ten there, and that would give me a negative fourteen there, and that would give me a. <laughs> Hang on, let me try it. So negative two, you said is working, and. My original was one seven. Seven. All right. Wait, did I goop up on my other one? Hang on, let me just double check my math. Let me just double check. Oh, you know what? I see my error. So that this does indeed work, okay. All right. So this is the quadratic I would need to use right here. What was my quadratic I used up here? Zero double that. Forget that. So this was unfortunately incorrect. So this looks like it will indeed factor. So x plus 7, x plus 2. And that's why our solutions are positive 2 because of that, negative 2, and negative 7. I'm sorry. If I could learn how to copy my own work, I might actually be somewhat successful. Y'all think I'm a great teacher? I can't do it. Does everyone see the error I made? Yes. You understand that, okay? Sorry about that error. Cool. Yeah, I'm that same one. Yeah. So like x minus two, and then plus two x squared plus five x minus two. X squared what? X x squared plus five x. Uh huh. Yes, so if I had x squared plus 5x minus 14, yeah. that would have been used in the negative 2, right? So that would have factored to x minus 7 and x plus, x plus 7, x minus 2, which then gives me the negative 7 still and gives me the positive 2, and that would have been used in here. So it would have worked that way as well. Cool. Oh, man, we're getting deep on these. Good. So number 8 as well, you say? Yay? No? Maybe? Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can do number eight without any errors on my part. Oh, dude, thank you. Got the cobwebs out. We're ready to rock and roll. <coughs> okay. So it said we still have the same ones. One, negative one, positive two, negative two, right? Those are our possible roots. Which one do you want to start with? Black one. <coughs> Excuse me. You want to go with the one? Okay. So I got one, five, two, negative eight. One down, that's one times one is one. That's uh, now what? Six. Six times one is six. Eight. Eight times one is positive eight. And zero. Cool. So that tells me that x minus 1 will give me x equals 1 for one of my zeros. Correct? And then let's see if we can factor this. Uh, 
x squared plus 6x plus 8. Did I write it down right? <laughs> 2 and 4. x plus 2, x plus 4. So my other zeros would be x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 4. If you had chosen to do the negative 2 on synthetic division first, bless you, then you would have had something that would have factored as well. Huh. Let's go to the second or third pages. Is there anything there? Calculator? Okay. Where's the calculator? Where did, oh, and all of them use the calculator? Cool. Any one particular or just any of them? 12. 12? Okay. All right, so for problem number 12, we have this equation, and I'll bust out the calculator, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the beauty of this calculator. Okay, I'm going to plug that into my graphing calculator, and I'm going to graph it. Okay, so here I equals, I'm going to plot out. So number 12, they want x raised to the third plus 2x squared minus 11x. Minus 12. Is my equation right? X to the third plus 2x squared minus 11x minus 12. Cool. Um, I always do this when I'm graphing. It's up to you if you ever want to do this. I'm going to hit zoom standard, which takes me back to negative 10, positive 10, just because I don't know where my graph's at right now. So I'm going to go zoom number 6, zoom standard. Does it cross the x-axis three times? Mm -hmm. Okay. So does it look, so on my calculator, I can do this. So I can calculate. I want to find a zero. Let's find the, one, the furthest left one. So I'm on the left side. I'm below it, below the x-axis. I'm going to go over to the right side of where that zero is, and I have to make sure I'm above the x-axis on this one. Yes, no. So it shows I have a zero at negative 4. OK. So negative 4 is 0. That goes with x plus 4 as the binomial, right? OK. So it's up to me if I wanted to synthetically divide, take it down to a uh, quadratic. And this might have crossed, as long as it crosses at non-decimals, or solid, if it crosses at decimals, if it's asking for the zeros, we're okay doing the zeros that way with the decimals that goes out kind of far, unless they ask for an exact answer. Does it ask for exact values? Okay. So I'm going to go back to my calculator. It looks like this one, let's try and find our zero. Now a lot of you are looking saying, yeah, but it's one. But let's just make sure it's not one point something. So I'm going to go second ca uh, calculate. I want to find another zero. I'm going to have, and this time I'm going to be the, to the left of it. If I'm on the left, I have to be above the x-axis. If I'm going to go to the right of it, I have to go below the x-axis. Does that make sense? And you know when you're above or below if that's positive or negative, the y value. All right, this one came out to be negative one. I'm pretty happy about that. So negative one is also an answer. So x plus 1 is that, so that yields me negative 1 as a solution. And let's find my last solution. Let's try that. I think it looks like 3. Well, let's just make sure. Let's go second, calculate a 0 again. And I'm going to go over to that. I have to be on the left side. I'm definitely on the left side of it. It's negative. It's below. So what do I have to make sure if I'm on the right side? What does it, it has to be above it, so that y value has to become positive. Okay, it's now positive. We're good. So 3 comma 0. Sweet. 
So x minus 3 is the binomial, which leads me to another solution of being 3. So my solutions to this problem is to the third power. You have three real, rational roots. Does that make sense if I use that terminology? Done. Anything else for the calculator? That's 18. We'll call this one good. All right, number 18. We have uh, f of x is equal to 3x to the fourth plus 11x to the third plus 11x squared plus x minus 2. So all my possible roots could be plus or minus 1 and plus and minus 2 all over plus minus 1 and plus or minus 3. So we might get decimals on this one. But do you all understand how you would recognize the difference between a rational zero and an irrational? The rational zero usually is going to come out to one or two decimals, like 3.5 or 3.56. That's an exact value. If it comes out to like 3.56233273232 and then ends, that's probably irrational, which means you'd have to go to the quadratic formula. How many zeros should this one have? should have four, okay? All right, so let's plug this into our calculator. Y equals, clear? And we're allowed to use our graphing calculator? As far as I remember, yes. Okay, so you make the rules, so that should be Yeah, but I also meet with my colleagues that... Don't tell them. The unfortunate thing is one of you would go tell one of your friends who has another teacher, and then one of your friends will go and tell their mother, and then that mother will then call that teacher. And then you can just say, that kid is mine. Oh, that was mine. So I got 3x to the fourth plus 11x to the third plus 11x squared plus x minus 2. Happy? Okay. Let's graph it. Ooh, we have a bounce. We have a bounce in there. Okay, so for the sake of time, I'm going to say this. My zeros are this. Negative 2, we good? Negative 1 and negative 1. Why do I say negative 1 and negative 1? Because there's a bounce. Okay, I can't really see that one, can I? Okay. So, I have negative 2, so I'm pretty sure negative 2 is going to work, and I think we have negative 1 happening twice. We all good so far? Do we feel comfortable with those are our roots? That, that last one is, is it a longer decimal, so I say it's going to be irrational, okay? I'm going to show you how to find it, okay? So how many roots does this problem have? Four. It has four solutions. We have three of them that it looks like we know. But just in case, let's do this. Let's go negative two. So I have three, 11, 11, one, and negative two. Agree? Bring this down. That's a three. That's going to give me a negative six, which then gives me a five, which then gives me negative ten, which gives me one, which gives me a negative two, which gives me a negative one, which gives me a positive 2, there's a 0 there. So that's a root. So that checks out, yes? Okay, now I can use synthetic division again on the whole thing, or I have this as well. So I know that x plus 2 is totally going to work. Okay, bless you. So let's take, let's try negative 1 now. But rather than do the whole thing, I'm going to do synthetic division with what I found right here. Okay, so that's a 3, that gives me a negative 3, that's a 2, that gives me a negative 2, that gives me a negative 1, that gives me a positive 1, which is a 0. So does negative 1 work? Yeah, okay, negative 1 would have worked on if I'd used that whole thing too, okay? So that verifies 
the first negative one, so that means I have x plus one. Agree? What's my last root? Do I have a second one or negative one? Yeah, so I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to try negative one one last time because I thought it was a double root because we had a bounce. And I could plug it into that to see if it works. We know it works there. We can plug it in there. We know it works there. But let's plug it in here. Is that okay? Bring this down. Three. That's a negative three. That's a negative one. That's going to be a um, positive one, which is a zero. Sweet. Okay, now let's figure this out. This was x to the fourth, yes? This was x to the third, yes? This is x to the second, yes? This is x to the what? First. So then I have 3x minus 1 equals 0 which comes out to x equals one-third. Did that one on the calculator come out to a big point three, 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 three? Perfect. We just verified how it worked. Okay? So we have two of these. And then if I wanted to make this back into a binomial, does everyone feel comfortable that this is the binomial? You see how I did that? I multiplied both sides by three, so I got a three x, and then I subtracted one. So this right here is actually the factored version of this. Does this agree with what our graph looks like? Should we have a bounce in there? Do you understand why the bounce is in there? Which thing up there is making the bounce? The squared, the x plus 1 quantity squared is why the bounce happens. What would happen if it was x plus 1 raised to the third? It would be a wiggle. So it's not going to go straight through. It's going to have a little woo. Okay? Yeah. No? Yeah. We over at 16, I just want to over to figure that out. So. 16 is so confusing. Eh, let's hit 16 different time. Hit a second time. If you want to take a little extra time on that, it's fine. If not, pass it forward. I'm going to get both sides. I just want to watch that. Wait, if we send it in tomorrow, is it late? Nope. If we get send it in with both, with both, it evens with three. No, evens is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shorter. You guys are so efficient over here. All right. So the notes, yes, they might be a larger packet, but um, there's an awful lot of it that is a lot of review. Let's see how quick I can get through a lot of stuff. There's a lot that's review that we already know. Okay. Um, we know that this is square root of negative 1. This is negative 1. This is square root of I, or negative I. And this is just 1. Agree? Agree. So I get negative 3 here, six, negative 16 here. Uh, negative 8i. And what is i to the third, though? Negative 1. It's negative i, right? Okay, so I don't need that anymore. What is that going to give me? 8i. And then this one is 81i to the fourth. What is i to the fourth? Negative, oh, it should be a negative 1. Sorry about that. So negative 81. Cool? Okay. So what are the solutions here? Agree? Solutions here. Good? 
Moving on. All right. Um, shoot, we can easily find this answer. So, finds this, use the quadratic on this one. Quadratic formula? A okay? Ready? Fine. All right. So, So what can we do about this one? So there's a few things we can look at here. If I have four terms, look at my first two. I can factor an x squared out, and that leaves me x plus 1. Agree? I can factor out a negative 1 here, and that leaves me an x plus 1 there. And that's going to give me x squared minus 1 and x plus 1 for solutions. So that's going to give me x squared equals 1, x equals plus or minus root 1, which is x squared equals plus or minus 1. And this one gives me an answer, x equals negative 1. This is going to have a bounce. It has a bounce at negative 1. Why do I say that? Because we list it twice. Okay? Or we, can, we could have synthetically divided on that one. You have all the roots of 1 and all the roots of negative 1, and it would have worked out. Okay? Um, do me a favor. Let's do the best we can on M. And I will cover any questions on M tomorrow, okay? Well, try, do your best on it. I'll answer questions tomorrow. If it doesn't have to be done, all the way done tomorrow, then we'll just collect it Monday. Okay. Cool? Yeah. Guys, girls, have a great day. Take care of one another. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, buddy.